I thought to dedicate this homiletic time to some understanding of what's happening in the Holy Land today. And with even a minimal understanding of it, what teaching does it have for us? So let me look at this. Pilgrims and those who have visited Israel will understand better the meaning of the conflict and its origins. But for most of us who have not visited the Holy Land, it will be good for us to reflect on the teaching of this conflict and what it should mean to us. The state of Israel is very young, 75 years old, founded in 1948. It's young and it's a very small area. The entire state of Israel is about the size of the state of New Jersey. The population is small, about 9 million. Of the 9 million, about 20%, a little bit more, are Palestinians who are either citizens of Israel or they have permanent residency in Israel. Keep in mind 9 million, a lot of people, but the county of Los Angeles is 11 million. So it's a small country with a small population. When it was founded in 1948, in order to establish the state of Israel, many, many Palestinians, six or seven million, were displaced. And they were confined to two areas. One we call the West Bank. And the West Bank is an area on the west bank of the River Jordan. And in that area, which is not part of Israel, it's called occupied territory, there lives two and a half million Palestinians. And you read about Israeli settlements encroaching on these Palestinian land. Now the pilgrims visit the West Bank Bethlehem is in the West Bank, um, Jericho, the River Jordan where we renew our baptismal vows, that's in the West Bank, and Jacob's well. Remember chapter 4 in John's Gospel, the woman of Samaria and how Jesus meets her and she goes through a conversion. Jacob's well is part of the West Bank. So pilgrims, we do spend time in the West Bank. So, Palestinians were confined to the small area of the West Bank and on the other side of the country, on the Mediterranean, a place called Gaza, the Gaza Strip. And there lives about two million Palestinians. And the Gaza Strip is about as big as the city of Detroit. So you have these four and a half million Palestinians living in these occupied territories, they have no homeland. A Palestinian baby born in Bethlehem today has no homeland, but everybody has a homeland. They don't have a homeland. They have no country. They're living in what we call occupied territory. And this, since 1948, has been the genesis of the passion and the energy of the conflict which is with us today. And of course you have Jerusalem. For all Jews, the holiest place in the world. The place of their temple. And what they have of the temple is the Western Wall. Inaccurately sometimes called a Wailing Wall. It's the Western Wall of the temple. And that's the most sacred place in the world for all Jewish people. And then you have how sacred Jerusalem is to us, Christians, where Jesus, being a devout Jew, would have come to the temple. And this is where Jesus was crucified, where he died and he rose from the dead in Jerusalem. And this is where Pentecost happened, the birthing of the church. So clearly, it's sacred space for all Christians. And then for Muslims, it's the third holiest place in the world, after Mecca and Medina, the Dome of the Rock and Alaska Mosque on the Temple Mount, 
a most holy place for all people of Islam. Therefore, you have the three great monotheistic religions coming together in a small space of Jerusalem. Now, that's a little background. But the energy and the passion that drives the conflict today has its beginnings way back in 1948. Now, there were other things happened in the meantime, but that's the essential understanding of how the graphics are set up here that creates this appalling conflict which we have today. Now, um, we live in a very dark world, when you think about it, within living memory, within living memory, we have witnessed an extraordinary assault, astonishing, scandalous, outrageous assault on innocent human life. Within memory, we can remember the Holocaust, the killing fields of Cambodia, 1975. Two million people slaughtered Cambodia. Innocent people. We're now looking at a war in the Ukraine where many innocent lives are lost. And now we have the scandal, the outrageous scandal in Israel and in the West or, and now in Gaza. Destruction of human life, innocent human life. It's an appalling commentary on the human condition. The 17th century Anglican divine John Donne said this, no man is an island, separate and distinct from himself. So the destruction of any life affects us. Therefore, he says, send not to know for whom the bell tolls, it tolls for thee. Even in our own country, in many places, our children can't go to school without some kind of armed security. It's an, it's an extraordinary commentary on our times. So what does it teach us and where is our hope? Where is our redemption in the chaos and the violence and destruction of the world which belongs to us? Listen to the rabbi, and the rabbi, the wise rabbi, asked his students, when is night over and when does day begin? When is darkness over and when do we have light? And one student said, perhaps night is over and day begins when I can see the lines in the palm of my hand. No, said the rabbi, no, no. Perhaps when I look at a distance and I can see the difference between a dog and a sheep. No, the rabbi said, it's not so. Perhaps it is light if I can tell the difference between a fig tree and a pear tree. No, the rabbi said, then tell us, rabbi, when is night over, when does darkness stop, and when does light begin? And the rabbi said, when you can look in the face of every man and every woman and see your brother or your sister, until that time, we are in darkness. Therefore, it must be, it must be that the color of your skin matters not. Your ethnic origin is not an issue. Your language, your sexual orientation, your social acceptability. Look in the face of each person and see your brother and your sister, and then the night is over and we are in light. Until that happens, we are in darkness, said the rabbi. And this is our hope. It's the only hope we have. It's the manner in which 
we can make a difference in this world. It must be true in our churches where each person is brother and sister. It matters not their color, their orientation, their origins, their language. It matters not. This is our sister and this is our brother. That's the redemption. That's the only hope we have. We must find it in our churches. We must find it in our homes. We must find it in our society. And until we do taste, experience, and live that, the rabbi said, we're still living in darkness. So the word of God and a living community of faith empowered in Jesus Christ and led by the Holy Spirit must be a place where each person is brother and each person is sister. We have to be people of the morning. We have to be people of light. We have to be people of vision, people that take risks in order to say the message that the night is over and the day has begun. Here at Holy Family, in your homes, in your communities, and in our world. Amen.